Hey everyone, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria and welcome to today's video. So today is a response video to yesterday's video, how um, I lost over 20 pounds in one year eating unlimited sugar, unlimited carbohydrates. Um, so I've been on a high carbohydrate, low fat, plant-based vegan, unlimited calorie diet for over 10 years now. And I have a BMI, I started with a BMI of like, almost 25 and now I'm down to a BMI of 19. So um, it's happened pretty gradually, but over the last year things have sped up quite a bit. And a lot of that comes down to the health of my body. I've just become metabolically efficient. I've become very healthy. Um, you know, the last time I had blood work done, um, everything just came back normal. So the, the questions that I received, um, from my last video for this video are wonderful. They're tight. They're asking about my general health, um, specifically um, hormone status um, in regards to like needing fat and protein for hormones because I eat very little fat and protein and I have done that for years now. Um, what about my pancreatic functioning um, in regards to unlimited fruit and sugar uh, because pa the pancreas controls um, our insulin and glucagon uh, production as well as um, creates enzymes to help digest our food. So I'm gonna get into talking about that a little bit more. And then the other question that I had um, was about insulin resistance related to starvation. So. Um, those are the topics I'm going to be discussing um, and then there was also like how's my energy level my sleep my mental health so in a nutshell I am feeling fabulous like so good I sleep so good I wake up and I don't need anything to wake up I just get out of bed and I'm ready to go I get right on my rebounder or I go for a run like first thing in the morning <clears throat> to kind of wake up and get my system going I drink some water um, I sleep anywhere from eight to ten hours a night on average. Um, lately, I've going I've been going to bed a little bit later, but I prefer to be in bed at nine o'clock. Uh, my mental health is great. Um, I have a tendency to be prone to anxiety, um, but you know my diet really helps with that. And my my energy level is fabulous. Like I feel so good every day. It's really steady. Um, I'm able to be physically active all day long, whether it's doing exercise or cleaning my house or playing with my kids or whatever it is that I'm doing. I have good energy for it. Um, so let's get back into talking about uh, fat and protein for hormones. That is a huge myth. Your hormone production actually has more to do with your ability to intake carbohydrates because our hormones are very subject to um, our stress level and if we are having excess amounts of cortisol being produced because we're not taking in enough carbohydrate that is going to cause inflammation and inflammation plus elevated um, cortisol just creates a cascade within our body where it impacts the functioning of our other hormones. So I get into detail talking about this in my coaching program. I'm not going to talk about it here because it's like, you know, an hour worth of content. Um, so if you're interested in learning, again, the nitty gritty details of how I've got my results and why this works, um, scientifically, then sign up for my coaching program. Link is in the description box. Okay, so the um, I'm going to talk now a little bit about the pancreas. So our pancreas is an organ that sits next to our stomach, and its main role is to squirt juices into our small intestine to help digest uh, the food contents of our stomach. You know, whatever we ate, and as it starts moving through the small intestine where it needs to get broken down um, into very tiny little uh, molecules for absorption into our bloodstream from our digestive tract, um, that's what the pancreas helps to do. So the pancreas, now listen to this, this is very important, okay? The pancreas creates enzymes known as lipase, which helps to break down fats, protease, which breaks down protein, and amylase, which breaks down starch. 
Okay, so there's no uh, <laughs> enzyme here for breaking down sugar. Keep that in mind, okay? When we take in sugar or sugary fruit, sh simple sugars, right? Um, they don't require enzymes to be broken down, all right? So that means automatically that if we have any kind of compromised pancreatic functioning and we're on a high fruit, high sugar diet, I recommend the two combined. I recommend eating the majority of your calories every day from fruit with the addition of sugar to taste, okay? So that is my recommendation and then starches as needed at the end of the day. Um, but the more your diet is composed of fruits, the simple sugars that are found in fruits, the less stress there is on your pancreatic functioning because it doesn't need to use a whole lot of its power to you know, create these enzymes to digest huge fat and protein and you know starch molecules so this is why I don't recommend a starch based diet because you're going to be taxing your pancreatic functioning more than you would be if you were on a high fruit diet now um, the other thing about the pancreas is that it is responsible for insulin production as well as glucagon production so insulin is the hormone that gets secreted when our blood sugar becomes elevated after a meal, um, insulin helps to shuffle that sugar into our cells, okay, from our bloodstream. Um, glucagon's responsibility is to activate, um, to raise blood sugar levels when our blood sugar is too low. So we need to have both working correctly, so normal pancreatic functioning, in order to have really good blood sugar levels. So. How does fruit and sugar influence insulin levels? Well, a fruit and sugar diet is the most optimal for promoting insulin sensitivity and decreasing insulin resistance. And the reason why is because the fat and protein content is very low and it's easy for fruit and sugar to, um, in a low protein, low fat blood environment to um, transfer from the blood into the cells. There's no obstruction there from excess fat and protein in the bloodstream. So when you have that kind of a condition, which gets created when you eat a high carb, low fat, plant-based vegan diet, especially one that's high in fruit, because fruit doesn't require a whole lot of insulin to even go into the cells. So it even lowers insulin needs, you know, it lowers insulin needs even more. Um, it's the ideal diet for um, promoting insulin sensitivity. And um, Neil Barnard, um, Dr. Neil Barnard, has written several books, um, you know, proving that a high carb, low fat, plant based vegan diet reverses type 2 diabetes. So if you'd like to learn more information, um, you can look into that. The last topic I want to discuss here was a great question that was asked about how does um, restriction or starvation, fasting, carbohydrate calorie restriction, promote insulin resistance. This also can happen uh, while doing a keto diet, a carnivore diet. Um, now I want to just note here that the insulin resistance, you're not insulin resistant when you're fasting, when you're under eating, when you're calorie restricting, okay? You become insulin resistant afterwards when you start eating again. So that is the significance here. But the restrictive period primes your body to become insulin resistant afterwards. So I talk about this in depth in my uh, coaching program. A link for that is in the description if you really wanna learn like the nitty gritty of what I'm talking about here. But basically, insulin resistance develops due to the decreased action on glucose transport during the starvation period. So you don't have glucose coming into the body um, and your body is needing to create its own glucose from protein and fat um, and glycogen, but our glycogen gets used up really quickly. So it's mostly protein and fat when we're in prolonged uh, restrictive period. Um, so that actually raises our cortisol level as well and keeps our cortisol level elevated. And then simultaneously, our leptin levels in our blood drop. And the combination of the high cortisol and the low leptin um, 
causes the insulin resistance. So elevated cortisol, um, it increases inflammation and blood pressure, promotes lipogenesis to encourage body fat storage. So a lot of people, um, you know, on YouTube ads and stuff, will talk about like, are you stressed? Is your cortisol level high? Are you storing belly fat? It's because chronically elevated cortisol promotes um, abdominal fat storage and uh, lipogenesis, okay? So you're setting yourself up for this when you start eating again. And some people even get to a point too where their me metabolic functioning is so low because of restriction that they just, it, let's say they're eating like a thousand calories a day, right? If you are like forcing your body to do that all the time chronically where it's not getting enough carbohydrate calories in, you are going to start converting the food that you're eating those thousand calories into fat more readily. So um, this, you know, this is something that you don't want to do. And like for me, this is where I came from when I first came to a high carb, low fat plant-based vegan unlimited calorie diet is I was insulin resistant and that's why I was able to gain so much weight eating, you know, unlimited amounts of fruit and greens. Um, so elevated cortisol also lowers immune function and causes hyperglycemia. So it's going to result in elevated blood sugar levels, which is going to, and then if you have insulin resistance on top of it, you're looking at a pre-diabetic situation. Uh, so then as our leptin levels and our blood drop. So leptin is kind of correlated with our body fat levels, but if you're eating enough all the time and you're losing weight, then your leptin level stays intact and you can only really drop like until your body gets to, you know, it's, um, naturally leanest level to maintain the, your normal leptin blood levels because you don't want your leptin in your blood to be too low and you don't want it to be too high. You want it to be normal. Um, too high means you have too much body fat, so it shuts down your appetite. Too low of leptin means that you don't have enough body fat and it turns up your appetite. So it works directly with ghrelin, actually. Ghrelin is more of like our short-term appetite controller where it basically turns our appetite on and it turns it off. So low leptin levels create elevated ghrelin levels to assist hyperphagia, which hyperphagia is um, having a really intense appetite or excess hunger um, uh, to provide the, the point here. The reason why this happens is so that your body eats <laughs> to provide the necessary energy it's needed to repair and restore itself following starvation. So the, it's not a bad thing that this happens. Your body does this to preserve itself. Your body wants to live. So regardless of what you're forcing it to do, it's going to override you at some point and make your body reach homeostasis once again um, so that it doesn't, you know, anorexics, people who are able to chronically under eat for a really long time, they develop heart failure and all kinds of things from their body catabolizing itself. So that's what somebody does when they go on a, restri a chronically restricted diet. Um, your body, could, it breaks itself down and all the acids and toxins that are created from ketosis and gluconeogenesis and um, the breakdown of you know, all the proteins in the system that are acidic, this, you know, creates a really toxic condition in your body that um, your body has to neutralize. So it starts pulling calcium from your bones. So now you become, you know, os prone to osteoporosis. And the thing is though, that these conditions can also happen in people who eat too much protein and fat and not enough carbohydrates every day as well, which is like the standard American diet and what a lot of current diet uh, methodologies are promoting right now. But when you consume an unlimited calorie, which means you're eating for your appetite, okay? And you may need to eat 5,000 calories at the start. That's what I had to do. Um, now I eat about 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day, just naturally. I, my body tells me when it's hungry, I eat. And then when I'm done eating, I'm done. And then I have, you know, so many hours before I need to eat again. And that is where you want to get to. And eating a high fruit diet 
promotes that in like the most efficient way, the healthiest way possible. Now you don't have to just eat a high fruit diet. Uh, I recommend the raw till four diet. I think it's a beautiful way of transitioning yourself to eating more fruit um, and not being afraid of adding sugar to your food if it's not sweet enough and getting used to that, getting used to, because leptin levels in our blood, they are very much controlled by our carbohydrate intake. So when we eat carbohydrates, our leptin level stays normal. It's more prone to staying normal even while you're losing body fat because you're telling your body that there's fuel coming in, there's carbohydrates coming in. And the more of the uh, fruit rate, like the higher fruit ratio in your diet to starch, again, this is why I don't promote starch solution, the less amylase you need from your pancreas. So your pancreas can work even more efficiently. And that also helps to regulate insulin sensitivity better as well. So if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. If you're interested in my coaching program or working with me one-on-one, -on -one, or I also have a Facebook private coaching group, um, check out the link to my website coaching page. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it for today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.